Welcome to this netcast of the worship service of March 7th, the third Sunday in Lent. In the name of our creator, welcome. First time visitor to our netcast or one who has been here many times, child or elder or in between, caregiver, caretaker, disciple, children of God, loved and loving, welcome in the name of the sovereign Lord. Now, as we still our hearts, let us hit, listen to the prelude played by David. Let us pray. Come into God's presence. It is in God that we live and move and have our being. Come travel a Lenten journey, a journey together as a community of faith and also alone. Come hear Christ's call and to love God with all we are and to love our neighbor as ourself. Come into God's presence and express our love. God of the smooth road, the rough places, and the wilderness paths, we thank you for giving us a safe place, for blessing all of creation. God of the hungry times, the difficult times, and all the times of our lives, we ask for your guidance, wisdom, and spirit in our worship, in our work, in our choices, in our lives. Amen. And now let us sing hymn number 20, 222. Come, let us sing from Voices United, verse 1, 3, and 4.
Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. There are two small scripture lessons today. The first one is from Psalm 21. The king rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you give. You have granted him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. You came to greet him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. And from Genesis chapter 12, we read verse 1 to 4. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, and as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. May God bless the reading of his word to us today and truly bless our hearts. Amen. Today's message is reestablishing being a blessing. Two weeks ago, we considered the concept of saying no as a good response in making a choice because of having first said yes to honoring God, yes to trusting God, yes to serving God, and loving our neighbor. Will I do this or not? How will I use the time and resources I've been given? As people of faith, we believe that all we have is from God. How will we use that is the discipleship question for us. God's promise of blessing to Abraham was, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. Abraham would become rich, powerful, famous. He would have many possessions and many descendants. And how was he a blessing? Or how did he use all that he had? Today, think of the royal ruler of Brunei. And think of the insane wealth he has and how it is used for pleasures for the royal family. 250,000 luxury cars, palaces, yachts, and a decadent lifestyle. Abraham was wealthy and powerful, but not selfish and egotistical. God's blessing upon him was not for selfish gain and pleasure, but to be a blessing to others. Two of Jesus' ten richest persons, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, have followed the path of some wealthy entrepreneurs in the past like Andrew Carnegie, to be a philanthropist, to use their wealth for the benefit of others. Carnegie funded the building of libraries in much of the states and Ontario. He gave away $350 million in his lifetime to charities and various projects. And upon his death, the last 30 million he had was dispersed to charity and other projects. At this time last year, I was greatly annoyed with Trump. Such a selfish, greedy, immoral, liar, foolish leader. I was also disappointed with the choice of his opponent for president. Biden was an elderly statesman he had served six terms as senator. 
He had served two terms as vice president. He was twice unsuccessful in trying to become the presidential candidate for the Democratic Party. Could he match the rhetoric and charisma of Trump? Was he the best choice? I thought he would be a weak choice. Could he persuade the people that he was the better choice? Can he and will he affect change for the betterment of the weak and deprived? Will he help the world to be a better place? As God blessed Abraham, another elderly, rich, and powerful man, I hope God blesses Biden to be a blessing to others. And what about us as individuals and as a congregation? As the world emerges from this global pandemic, what will the world look like? What will Canada be like? Our community, our church, our own lives. Will the world in a year or two look like the world of two years ago? Or will we be in the midst of a depression as a consequence of the economic price of this crisis? Or will we be in a social and political revolution because of the social and economic inequality that has been increased by this crisis? It has been interesting in this crisis that the general populations have been willing to sacrifice for the benefit of the healthcare workers and the elderly, while some of our politicians have gone off to have a vacation. Similarly, many have lost finances and jobs, while the wealth of the U.S. billionaires has increased during this crisis. Political commentators speak of an economic reset because of the COVID-19 crisis. They mean revamping all aspects of society and economy, from education to working conditions, and transform all industries from gas and oil to tech in order to address the social inequality and the economic inequality and address the world's problems of population growth, urbanization, dwindling resources, global warming. We need to change to improve our world, the lives of all peoples, and our future. There is a hope for Canada with increased vaccinations to rebuild our economy and its social fabric. How will we change, adapt to what is to come post-COVID? How will we be a blessed nation and bless others? And what about our church and the Christian church in general? Think about it. For years now, we have been talking about the decline in church attendance, the decline of the Christian church and the post-Christian society of Europe and North America. I remember in a church in the 70s in a mid-sized city in Ontario having a fleet of 40 school buses for their Sunday school. Not anymore. I also saw a small country church be the backbone of a small village as it helped some needy neighbors and hosted a monthly community event of music and entertainment in the local town hall. But no more. There are lots of small rural churches closing and some big city churches as well. Ansley has a good, strong past. In our recent past, we have used benevolent fund gifts to help people in need. We've been very active and supportive on MARS, the committee that oversees refugees coming to Markdale. We have organized and given funds for the Christmas basket program, and we have donated to the United Church Mission and Service Fund. That fund supports 63 ministries of helping with housing, food, and mental health. It supports 33 chaplains in hospitals and universities. 
It supports 20 ecumenical and social movements. It supports seven theological schools and three education centers. It supports 83 pastoral charges that need financial support. Ansley has done well and is doing well. We are continuing to give to the Mission and Service Fund, maintain a meaningful worship service while we go through this COVID crisis without a pastor. And we look forward when this is over and we can again be together and reach out to our community and be a blessing. But will we be able to do the same as before? Will we do our tr turkey supper in the fall? Probably not this year. Will we again have a full sanctuary for our Christmas Eve service? I don't know. But what I do know is that we will seek to be God's blessing in this community under the new circumstances. As we go from through Lent thinking of the past and wanting change and something better in the future, of being more caring towards our neighbor or reflecting God's love, let us think about what that might be. I remember a couple of instances in my past when I said yes, seeking to be a blessing to someone. And these two stories are just an illustration of what might be. One day as I was sitting in my office when the phone rang, the woman asked for prayer as she was having car problems. I asked how I could help her in a different way than just prayer. And she asked for a cup of coffee. I went to the gas station where she was and brought her home. She ended up staying with us for about a week. Her car had been stolen in Brantford and had been recovered in Calgary. She had been given the funds to go and take a bus from her home to Calgary and pick up the car. And here she was, an older woman who had hardly ever left Brantford, driving her car from Calgary back to Brantford. Through the midst of winter in northern Ontario, while her one window was broken and she had a defective solenoid. She came home with me and then she met other people. And over the next few days, her car was fixed and she was rested and she was given some extra cash for food and motels to get her home. She had been blessed by a number of people in the congregation and I'm glad that I had welcomed her I had been a blessing to her, helped others to be a blessing to her, and she was a blessing to us. When she came into our home, our second daughter was a two-month-old colicky baby. And this woman held her, put on some music, and soothed her. And later on, we wore out that record as we often played it, soothing our child and our spirits. Just shortly after I retired, I was asked how I was enjoying retirement. And I flippantly said, well, sometimes I'm really bored. So the person said, well, if you are bored and you, you can always come and help me. And I agreed I could do that and wouldn't mind doing that. It was a good idea. And two weeks later, that person called me for some assistance, implying that it would be a little bit of help for a couple of hours for a couple of days. 
And I ended up spending a lot of hours, a lot of days at his home. And I ended up with a great friend who has added a lot to my life. Helen and I enjoy very much spending time with him and his wife and children. I was a blessing to him, and I have been greatly blessed. I recognize that for many of us, our physical strength is less today than when we were in our youth. And opportunities to interact with others and help others tends to be few. And we do not have the wealth or the power to make big changes. And I'm certainly not advocating giving all of our limited resources to others. I'm asking myself and each of us to think about how we do use our time and money. I'm asking us to remember how God has blessed us. I'm asking us to experience again the love and the spirit of God and then to love others as we have received the love of God. Out of God's rich blessing in our life, may we be a blessing. Think of a moment about a time when someone was a blessing to you. Then think of a moment you were a blessing to someone. Now think of how you might be a blessing to someone today or tomorrow. Let us be aware of the opportunities to be a blessing in our present experience. For as God has blessed us, may we be a blessing. And now, let us sing hymn number 108 throughout these Lenten days and nights from Voices United. Let us pray together. Loving God, we thank you for the journey of our lives with its ups and downs, with its questions and challenges, and with its moments of joy. As we say thank you, we realize there is brokenness in us and in our world. Forgive our selfish acts and our inaction to be a blessing to others. Knowing that we are loved and forgiven, we turn to the world to love it into wholeness. We pray for people living in desert times, facing famine of body and spirit, being tempted away from what is good and just, facing destruction. We pray for healing and wholeness. Lord, we pray for all peoples and leaders, religious, political, and social, for justice, fairness, and compassion, 
to aid the homeless and hungry, to work for peace, economic viability, and environmental stability around the world. Help us as a global village to end racism and treatment of inequality, whatever the basis. This we ask in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing from Voices United, hymn number 424, May the God of Hope Go With Us. Now, as you go from this time of worship into your lives, may you hear these words. As we travel this Lenten pathway, we journey together, a community of faith, and also alone. Let us go into God's world, practicing our faith to love God above all and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. And now I hear the postlude played by David. <laughs> 